So I'm gonna talk about a great diagram that Sam Sneed, the great Sam Sneed, left us in one of his golf books. So the image of Sneed talked about feeling that his hands only went to nine o'clock on a clock. So if we're looking here, six o'clock is below us, nine o'clock, 12 o'clock. So his idea was he felt like his hands only went to nine o'clock, but he felt that his shoulders turned to 1.30. You can see how much I stretch. So I go back further than that. It's a great image because things always get accentuated. They happen more than what we think in all aspects of the swing. So his idea was he didn't want his hands to go and have no shoulder turn. If we do that, you'll see a lot of the guys at the driving range do that. They go, well, I want to complete my backswing, so they just lift their arms up. They go, well, I got the full swing, but of course there's no shoulder turn. So their first move down is instinctively to work the club away from them and come over the top. So Sneed's logic was short hand travel, maximum shoulder turn. And you see, I won't go back as far as I think anyway. So he felt nine o'clock with the hands, he felt 1.30 with his shoulders. So now I've got a bigger shoulder turn than I've got arm travel. So as I start down, my shoulders don't spin open. I keep closure in my body and my hands have the opportunity to get to the ball first while the club stays back. Shoulder turn's important. It opens up the slot, gives us the avenue to begin hitting the ball. And the less my hands have to travel, the better. Like I said, shorter hand travel, bigger shoulder turn, puts me right in the slot and I can create the sequence of everything working together from a proper swing plane to get a good strike.